Hi everyone. Welcome to my stitchy home. My name is Becca and uh, this is my second video today. Today's date is Saturday. Well, it's probably technically Sunday because <laughs> uh, I think it's after midnight. Um, Sunday, July 28th, 2019. And thanks for stopping by. I've uh, changed out the quilt and changed out my top <laughs> so you're not looking at the same uh, the same picture as uh, the previous video uh, let me tell you about this quilt my local quilt shop which is so much fun in Columbus Georgia occasionally sells off quilt tops the this front uh, piece section of fabric <laughs> They sometimes sell off quilt samples that are already, you know, have the backing on them and they're all quilted. But in this case, they were just selling this front section. And it, it's real cute. What I'll do is I'll take pictures of these individual little blocks and what they say. And I'll insert those here. So I bought the quilt top and as I was looking around to try to find fabric to put on the back of the quilt, the owner of the shop said, hold on a minute, Becca, uh, give me just a minute. And she runs into the back of, the, of her office and comes back out and there in her hands is, uh, is this Quilt Diva fabric. which it's not on the front, but it's a companion print to the Quilt Diva fabrics that are on the front. And she had, she had already pieced it together to two big pieces of fabric. So it was bigger than the front and I left it with her. I paid for both and I left it with her and she quilted it. And then I added the, the binding for my, uh, the leftover Quilt Diva fabric. They're really left out in that this whole top was assembled, <laughs> that she had the perfect fabric for the back, and I didn't have to sew anything other than the binding. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, it's, it's cute, and you will have seen the photo, so hopefully you think it's cute as well. Okay, the last video, I was trying to catch you up with everything that's gone on in the past Four weeks since I did my video number six at StitchCon and we are to the point of showing you what I've been stitching on since then one of the things I've stitched on is my Christmas sampler and I finished it uh, but since then I've coffee dyed it and I'm probably gonna coffee dye it some more because I really want it to have an old look to it but I'll insert a picture of what it looked like before I coffee, tie, coffee dyed it here. I'm really happy with it. Like I said, I, I want it to look a little grungier. So I'm going to coffee dye it some more. And the first coffee dye that I did to it made the white in it, the white uh, DMC floss kind of off-white so it doesn't really show up against the background and I'm kind of okay with that but I'm thinking I might try taking some white whisper floss which is a, a rainbow gallery floss and it's kind of fuzzy and I may end up stitching that in the snow and on the snowflakes just to just so they'll pop out a little bit more white so I'm, I may experiment on that before I fully fully finish it but anyway uh, you saw what it looks like before coffee dyeing it. I got the mat cut at Hobby Lobby. I already had the frame. I have glass. And once I figure out <laughs> what last little bit I need to do to it, then I will assemble it all together. And uh, I'll show you a picture of what it looks like when it's fully finished. 
So besides that, I decided at StitchCon to start this. Uh, you may recall from video number five, I was agonizing over what to stitch on, what to start, what to do. It turned out I had very little time, uh, or I took very little time for actual stitching. Um, this is cute. So I did start it. I, I used my uh, Bags Plus flip. It's great. I can put the pattern with the little, you know, key. I can put the key or the pattern down in here. And um, it's got all my flosses and I just flip back and forth. So I didn't get a whole lot done at StitchCon, but then I came home and I did, I've gotten this much done so far. I'm starting in the center of the design. I'll show that to you again. So I'm kind of starting with that building right there. I love it. All DMC. Then I, since coming home, I started and uh, finished this design. Sorry, sorry for the glare. Um, it's called Eat the Chocolate. It's by My Big Toe. And that's what it looks like. It's a, it's a mystery linen or even weave, even weave, mystery, even mystery, even weave that I picked up at, St at keepsakes in Cincinnati last November, December when I visited and I used the called for colors. The pattern itself came with, let's see if I can show you. It, it didn't come with the, the four buttons that you need. It came with, it's not wanting to cooperate. Anyway, it came with uh, three chocolate chip cookies and a piece of candy. And the pattern calls for a cupcake, a Hershey's Kiss, a cookie and a piece of candy. So I think I went on one, two, three stitch and ordered the Just Another Button Company pack, um, button pack for this called Eat the Chocolate. It's um, 7376 MBTD from Just Another Button Company. And I got the buttons that I put on mine, the four buttons. So I'm going to offer this pattern and those four as a giveaway. If you're interested in this pattern with these buttons, just comment down below that something about chocolate. You like chocolate, you'd like to eat the chocolate, you'd like to stitch chocolate, whatever. And uh, that will... That giveaway will run the same as my last video to probably towards the end of August. And then the last thing I've stitched on is a Little Leaf Designs Welcome Friends. I picked this up at a stash sale and it came with one of the two called for threads. This is weeks, no. Needle Necessities Overdyed called Wooly Time. It also came with this charm. This house charm. And the only other thread it called for was the Weeks Dye Works Sweetheart Rose, which I did not have. So I used Clover. 
and it is, you know, a bit variegated with rose pink. And I stitched something for uh, an exchange, a gift exchange, coming up at the Nashville Cross Stitch Retreat. This is a cross stitch retreat hosted by Faye Kuhn, K U H N. She has a Facebook group, which I think is called Cross Stitch Club Originals. And she puts on a retreat each year. And this year she's doing it in Nashville. I think it's August 8th, 9th, and 10th. And this is my version of this. Instead of saying, welcome friends with a little house, I had mine say Nashville Retreat with a little 2019 charm. That's going to my gift exchange partner, but I also um, also picked up something else for her too. So I'm going to give this away with the green floss, which is plenty to stitch the green in this design and the little charm, the little house charm, if you want to stitch it as charted. If you're interested in this, say, say the word friends, comment down below and say, I'd like to stitch friends or something about friends. And I'll put you in the running for this chart. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say the giveaway rules here. You must be 18 or older to give me your address. You need to live in the U.S. or Canada. And don't say giveaway or win. If you do, I'll have to delete your comment. But I would be happy to send this out to someone. Just say friends. So the two giveaways are chocolate or friends. So that's what I've stitched on, and in, in the next video, I should be able to show you the fully finished Christmas sampler. So, okay, purchases. Oh my goodness. Okay, honey, don't listen to this, okay? <laughs> Put your... Put your earbuds in. You don't want to hear this. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I went to the annex at StitchCon. If you've watched any other StitchCon videos, which I'll, I'll try to link in the description box below some that I watched uh, that I really thought provided some good insight into what, what was included in StitchCon of what went on, the schedule of, of activities, and kind of how people reacted or responded to being there. Um, my bottom line would be you need to go, if, if you watch Flosstube, which you're watching my Flosstube, <laughs> if you watch Flosstube, if you are a cross-stitcher, you will have, I, I feel like you'll have a good time. That said, if you don't know anybody before you go, reach out to somebody. Reach out to me. Reach out to another floss tuber. If you're reading comments and you feel like you have something in common with somebody else that's commenting, maybe you're from the same area or you like to stitch the same things, reach out to them. And, you know, if they're going to StitchCon next year, put your name on the wait list if you get in. You will look forward to meeting that person in, in person. You will look forward to hopefully sitting with them and just enjoying your time together. It made a world of difference to me that I reached out to Brenda, the handwork maniac, and therefore was looking forward to seeing her. I had some other folks uh, comment that they would see me at StitchCon, so I got to meet them. There were others that I thought I would meet and interact with that I just, it was so overwhelming. I didn't get to everybody. <laughs> and if you're one of those, I am so sorry. <laughs> uh, because 
everybody there was just so lovely. So anyway, anyway, at the annex, one of the things I got was the StitchCon Limited Edition Color and Cotton Hand Dyed Fabric. This is 28 count. The color is, you know, special edition. And it's 17 by 26 inches. Just a great neutral. Super happy to catch that. I really wanted 32 count, but I can deal with 28 count. From Under the Sea Fabrics, I got A-I-N-E, Ein, Ina, this 32 count, and what did I get? I think I got a fat quarter, yes, fat quarter. It's kind of a pale pink, it's actually darker than it's showing up in the video. But uh, it's a it's a pale pink, and then I got another thirty two count looking glass, and this one is blue and lavender. And it's more blue than it's showing up on my phone screen. Love that. I think that's a fat quarter as, as well. I have the Jeanette Douglas Stitchy Box pattern, and I got the... Already, I already had that. But she had the wool accessory kit. Comes with... A wooden ruler, some pins, some wool, some thread. So that was great. They also had the wool felt kit for the journey box. Um, and if I can, I'll insert pictures of those patterns. Like I said, I already had them. Stitching by the Sea pin cushion. So I have the Stitching by the Sea designs and accessory thread packs, but I, I didn't have the pin cushion pattern, so I got that. And that would look great on this blue fabric. I got these two designs by Tellen Emblem. Beautiful, look like stained glass. They had them stitched up in the NX. I bought from the Heart and Hand trunk show this 2017 Collector's Heart. Oh, and it included the linen beads and button. The 2018 Collector's Heart also includes the linen beads and button the 2019 collector's heart have you figured out i like hearts yet <laughs> linen rick rack and button uh, spread kindness includes a piece of felt and a heart button Um, design, oh yeah, Cecilia Turner, and she was at, she was there, she was at the Annex, one or two days, anyway. From Rosewood Manor, thank you, friend, includes the beads and the floss. Beautiful. Also, Rosewood Manor. A star it says you are a star. It includes the button pack. Rosewood Manor Friends Are Flowers it includes the button pack. Another heart and hand. 
This was the kit, heart and hand, called Gratitude. And hands-on design. What I make with my hands, I give with my heart. And it includes the felt pre-cut flowers. And to go with that, I've been wanting to try the Sulky 12 weight cotton threads, so I got the thread pack that goes with that design. And finally, this is a gift for a friend. I don't know if she'll watch, but the little sewing machine charm. They had different uh, symbols, angels with different symbols. I got that for a friend. And so that's what I got from the NX. And I took the Stitchy Bus to Keepsakes. And I bought this chart clip, I think. I think I got this at Keepsakes. This or the Annex, but I think I got it at Keepsakes. I saw several people using them. I got some more needles. I got some Lady Dot Creates Chanel trim in kind of a dusty rose color. I got some 32 count, uh, a, a different pink, very modeled, kind of modeling in it. And a 32 count kind of, I don't know if this was Picture This Plus or Under the Sea. There's no tag on it, but it's Mostly green, but there's a little bit of purple throughout. I really like that. I've got an idea for that as well. Okay, so that was Keepsakes. That was the Annex and Keepsakes. And then I came home <laughs> and rested for the 4th of July week. And then on Saturday, July 6th, my husband and I flew to Salt Lake City. Why, you might ask, <laughs> did you fly to Salt Lake City? Well, we were actually invited to be in a wedding. We were in a wedding in Denver on Saturday, July 13th. And since we were having to fly to Denver for the wedding, I wanted to fly to Salt Lake City so I could see the Mormon temple. Uh, and tabernacle. and see the Great Salt Lake, north of Salt Lake City. Great Salt Lake is a salty remnant of prehistoric Lake Bonneville. Today covers about 1,500 square miles. Several rivers and streams run into the lake, but there is no outlet, only evaporation, which leaves the salts and minerals behind. Some parts of the lake, those farthest from the river inlets, are eight times saltier than the ocean, with three to four feet of salt resting on the bottom. Yeah. 
I also wanted to visit Shepherd's Bush, which is in Ogden, Utah, just north of Salt Lake City. And I reached out to Brenda, the Handwork Maniac, who lives in Salt Lake City. I reached out to Deb of Snug Harbor Crafts, and I let both of them know I was coming to Salt Lake. And at StitchCon, I met Colleen, the Highway Stitcher. She also lives in Salt Lake City. So an another side benefit of flying to Salt Lake was I got to see those ladies again. I saw them at, at StitchCon, and... Got to talk to them and visit with them, but saw them again on Monday, July 8th. We met up at Shepherd's Bush, and then we drove to... The, I wanted this to look like... The Craft Center for Fine Stitchery, which is in Salt Lake City. And so I'm going to show you purchases I made at Shepherd's Bush and at the Craft Center. Um, I'll also include some photos but let me show you what I bought first. So, at Shepherd's Bush, I wanted to get the Weeks Dye Works flosses to get this up. And they had them. I already have the linen some linen I'd picked up at a stash sale. I think it actually maybe even was included in with the pattern. Somebody else had already found some linen for it. Some beautiful rich colors. I'm looking forward to starting that. That's A New Beginning by Abby Lane Designs. I already had the pattern in the linen, so I got the floss there. I got some of these little pillows that you stitch a design, whatever you want, and insert in the pillow. I got three of those. I got, it's a little protector for your scissors. Because I have, I have some scissors that I just, you know, throw down into my bag loose and they don't have a cover for the blade. Not good. Never had an accident with that, but still. The color is Sussex 32 count. And it's kind of a plum. It's much pinker plumber than what you're seeing. But it is a it is a shade of purple, but it's got a lot of pink in it. So, you know, all these designs. They came with, some of them came with linen, but uh, I'll see. I have some other heart designs that I need pink fabric for, so that's why I acquired a lot of pink fabric. This is a 32 count. Darker than the other pink I got. This one, Lakeside Linens, 32 count. Remembrance Rose, it's hand painted, and this is, yeah, 13 by 18 inches, that's a bright, bright shades of pink, love that, and I got a, a bigger cut of Picture This Plus Fog, 32 count, um, I have the pattern by Rosewood Manor and a forest grew and that was kind of my thinking for this it's a, it's kind of a ecru color with modeling but I guess it has some gray in there but it it's anyway that might be for that pattern because that that needs a big piece of fabric so that's what I got at Shepherd's Bush, and then I went to Craft Center for Fine, let's see, let me read it again, Craft Center of, 
of Fine Stitchery in Salt Lake City. And I picked up this pattern by Plum Street Samplers, Love Thy Neighbor. Not a great picture. Um, and I decided to take it in a different direction. I got this. And do I know the name of the fabric? I don't think I do. It was packaged up for another design, for obviously a Halloween design. But I thought, you know, <laughs> I could kind of make these colors more fall-ish. And stitch it on. So we've got some blues and greens and golds. Off-white. So I've come up with a conversion for that, for how I'm going to stitch Love Thy Neighbor on a bright orange. <laughs> Wish me luck. I liked it because it had these two cats, and I can stitch them as a, as a black or off-black and gray cats. Okay. So we spent two nights in Salt Lake City, and like I said, did the meetup with Colleen the Highway Stitcher, Brenda Handwork Maniac, and Deb from Snug Harbor Crafts. And I'll insert that picture or those pictures here. And then we went to the Craft Center of Fine Stitchery, Stitching, Stitching, whatever, in Salt Lake City, fabulous shop and I think uh, my husband got some pictures of that shop and I'll insert those here. <sighs> then we drove to Moab, Utah to see my husband's best friend from college, Bob and his wife, Rhonda. And while we were there, Dave, my husband, and I did a hot air balloon ride. And so I will insert some pictures and video of our hot air balloon ride. It was fabulous. Here.
Wow, oh, shoot the field goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's not really close. <laughs> Everybody, ooh. Ooh. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I should. <laughs> After we left Moab, we drove to Denver, and um, besides visiting the cousin that I wanted to give the, the um, quilt that I had behind me that had the log cabins and the pine cones and rocks and wood grain fabric, uh, we, we visited him and his family for one night, and that was great. And then we went into Denver and um, spent the next few nights there to be in the wedding. But we did manage a brief stop at a stitching shop where I picked up this tin. Um, and I have, a, I have already stitched a heart-shaped item that I plan to put in this. So when I fully finish that, I'll show that again, and I'll insert a picture of a stitching shop here. Okay, then we went to the craft box. They buy from people who want to sell their stash, or they also take donations of stash. That I will stitch for him. A um, couple of different pearl cottons, a number 12 and number 8. I needed one of these for a pattern and I couldn't remember which it was so I when I saw these I picked them up. Ecru I think and then I picked up this kit. Treasured Thoughts. Hmm. Can't read the name of the. Oh, God grant me, because it has this little poem. God grant me the serenity. 
to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And so it comes with that little piece of paper, and it comes with a mat, and you put the paper here, and you stitch the magnolia there. So I got that for $1.79. <laughs> the prices at the craft box are fabulous. Fabulous. And I think that's it. Ooh. Okay. So, yes. And then we were in the wedding and I don't really have any pictures from that yet. Um, we were pretty much just in the wedding and just experiencing it from the viewpoint of friends of the couple and um, the professional photographer took pictures and I hope I get some uh, at some point. <laughs> so I think that's all that I had to show you in terms of plans this coming weekend I am going to Saturday or Sunday so this next weekend I'm gonna to go to a quilt retreat with a friend the very first thing I'm gonna do is put together my 2017 linen and threads mystery sampler bell pull so I'm excited to get that done and then whatever time is left I'm going to bring a Judy Niemeyer quilt which is paper pieced. I've got all the blocks ready. I just need to sew the blocks together and another friend that's going to be at the retreat is bringing her Judy Niemeyer quilt so I'll hopefully get to work on that some while I'm there. I don't I doubt I would get the whole quilt all the blocks put together but any progress is progress right then the following weekend I'm going to the Faycoon K-U-H-N Faycoon cross stitch retreat in Nashville with my cousin Lynn and I haven't decided what I am taking to work on and I have to agonize over that don't I <laughs> um I don't know. Stay tuned. I'll have to figure that out, won't I? I learned a lesson, though, from StitchCon. I took, like, four or five projects, and I only ever worked on one just because of the nature of that convention slash retreat. It was a very social time. There was a lot of up and down, visiting with people, um, you know, looking at the freebie table, looking at the brag table, just spending time with other stitchers. So I don't know if the Fay Coon retreat is going to be as interactive as that, but, um, so I, I want to be prepared to have enough stitching to work on, but probably don't have to take as many projects as I took to StitchCon and never touched. So I will come back after that cross stitch retreat and after I've had a chance to recover from that and I'll update you on where I'm at with the Christmas sampler with my stitching and quilting party whatever I work on at the cross stitch retreat and whatever I get in the smalls exchange at the cross stitch retreat so um I think that's it so thanks for stopping by my stitchy home and I'll uh, don't forget the giveaway if you want the eat eat the chocolate say chocolate if you want the welcome friends say friends and I'll see you soon bye, bye.